hey my friends gear up because i am going to tell you all the important things about pandas so don't skip don't forward and watch the full video so what is pandas let's just say something that is very easy to remember pandas is nothing but a python library and what it is used for well to start we can say that panda eases or simplifies data manipulation in python so what kind of data are we talking about here we are talking about structured data that means the data that you store or see in excel spreadsheets or rdbms tables now should i tell you about pandas before i proceed something which is interesting and unique well a fun fact is pandas library is built on top of the numpy library and this means that a lot of structures of the numpy library are available for use in pandas pandas are generally used in conjunction with various other libraries such as output data generated by pandas is used to plot chart or graph using the matplotlib library you know scikit-learn library has so many machine learning algos that take the data as input in the form of pandas data frames and all this makes pandas one of the go-to libraries for data science because pandas is used to clean messy data sets thus it makes them readable and relevant and relevant data pre-processed data is very important in data science now let's see quickly what we can do with pandas number one data cleaning so by data cleaning we mean that we can delete rows that are not relevant or those rows that contain wrong values like empty or null values and then we can perform data merging and suppose we want to join different data sets that also we can do with pandas number two is handle missing data so you can handle missing data easily using pandas and that data can be of float data type or non-float data type number three is you can add or delete columns from data frames and you can also filter data from a data frame as per your need number fourth pandas provides stunning group by functionality so if you are familiar with sequels then you must be knowing how important the group by clause becomes when you have to make groups and perform aggregate slash mathematical operations on them pandas helps you do that easily and number fifth is data visualization Pandas also makes data visualization quite easy by presenting the data to you in the form of data sets and you can then carefully choose the columns you want to see. All right, all right. I'm so proud of you because we have covered the important theory about pandas. This is what you should know about pandas at this stage and you will learn a lot more as you proceed ahead in this pandas course by joystick. Now it's time to deep dive into pandas. So to make it happen, we'll have to first set up the environment. So now I'll tell you how to install Python first, then Jupyter Notebook and then install pandas within it. Jupyter Notebook allows developers to write interactive code chunks to easily analyze and visualize their data. You don't need to write all the code and run it as a Python file. That is why Jupyter Notebook becomes a great computing environment to learn pandas. Environment setup is always a challenge. Either you are working in corporate or learning at home in your own machine. But if you follow the process of setting up Python and Jupyter Notebook that I show you in this video, it's going to make this task very easy for you. Therefore, let's first install Python. To install Python, first open any browser on your Mac. I will open Google Chrome. And in the search bar of the Google Chrome, just type Python and hit enter and then click on this website, which is www.python.org. Once this website opens, you hover on this downloads menu item and over here you will find the latest Python available for download. At the time of recording this video, it is Python 3.12.1. So you click on this. And since I have accessed this website from Mac, hence it automatically shows the Python for Mac OS. All right, my download is complete. Let me access my download. So I go to my downloads folder and here is this .pkg file. Now I'm going to double click on this file and follow the instructions. All right, I'm going to click on continue, continue again and continue again all right it's asking me to agree so i have clicked on the agree button 
and now it's saying that it's going to consume 176.4 MB of space on my computer. I am totally okay with that. So now I'm going to click on the install button. Okay, it's asking me for my admin username and password. Let me enter that. I click on install software and there you go. The installation has begun. It's good to see this message that install time remaining is less than a minute. All right, there you go. The Python is successfully installed. So let's go back to the terminal and check what's the version it shows now. It should be 3.12.1. All right, so let me go back to the terminal. Actually, I'll have to open a new terminal window to see the latest version. So let me do that. Okay. Now let me retype the command Python 3 space hyphen capital V. And there you go. Now the version is 3.12.1. So the latest Python is installed. Following these steps, you can install Python in your Mac 2 if you don't have it installed already. Now let's install Jupyter Notebook. But before that, I am going to create a virtual environment. Why virtual environment? Because I work on multiple projects in this Mac. And for each project, I have separate virtual environment because I want to keep libraries specific to a project separate from libraries specific to other projects. That's why virtual environment is necessary and it's a good practice to first create a virtual environment and then install libraries or computing platforms like Jupyter Notebook within it. Before that, let me close this terminal window and keep the latest terminal window only to avoid confusion. Over here, I'm going to get inside my desktop and let me create a new folder by the name VNV. So it will be MKDIR VNV and I'm creating this folder in the desktop. All right, you can see the folder appearing over here. I'm going to get inside this folder and now I'm going to create a virtual environment within it. So the command to create a virtual environment is Python 3 hyphen M V N V dot Y dot because I am within the folder in which I want to create the virtual environment. You can specify an absolute path over here and it's going to create the virtual environment within the folder specified in the path. So let me hit enter. It's going to take some time. And there you go. It hasn't thrown any error. So I think virtual environment has been created. Let me type the command ls hyphen ltr. And there you go. The virtual environment has been successfully created. Now we are going to activate it. So how to activate it? The command is again very simple. It is source space bin forward slash activate. And there you go. You see VNV within brackets over here in front of the prompt. This means that the virtual environment is active. This means that VNV is the virtual environment which is active. All right, now the time has come when we are going to install the Jupyter Notebook. So the command is very easy. So it will be, wait a second, before we begin installing Jupyter Notebook, let's check if Jupyter Notebook already exists in this newly created virtual environment. So to do that, we are going to write this command Python 3 hyphen M pip freeze. All right, nothing exists in this virtual environment as of now. Now let's install the Jupyter Notebook. So the command is very easy. It's pip install Jupyter. I hit enter and the installation has begun. Wow. 
quite a lot of downloading it is doing okay you can see all sorts of packages it has downloaded and there you go the installation is complete jupyter notebook is now installed now let's check whether jupyter notebook appears within the virtual environment so the command will be python 3 hyphen m pip freeze and i see lots of jupyter lab related packages installed over here which totally says that jupyter notebook is successfully installed now let's actually start it okay so let me clear this up a bit and let me write jupyter notebook here this is the command to start the jupyter notebook i hit enter and it has started all right there is a good chance that it's going to automatically start in a new tab in your browser like it has done for me if it doesn't then you go back to the terminal and you will find the urls over here which you can copy and paste in a tab and it's going to start the jupyter notebook for you as you can see this is the directory structure of the vnv environment now you would want to code something so to do that you'll have to start a new notebook so for that you click on here on new and over here you can see the notebook option you click on it and a new notebook has opened for you select the kernel it has to be python 3 so just select it just click on the select button and your notebook has started now you can actually code it so let me write the first line of code for you it will be printing hello world it's so i have written the code and now i'm going to click on this run button and there you go hello world is printed you can rename this notebook by just simply clicking here and uh, you can rename it to whatever you want let me rename it to first jupyter program all right it's renamed and you can see the notebook appears over here within the vnv directory as first jupyter program dot ipynb file okay the green icon that you see over here means that it's currently in operation even if you close this tab that doesn't mean that the notebook has closed we will have to explicitly close it by shutting the kernel down like this now it's closed now if you reopen it like this it's going to reopen but my line of code is gone because i didn't save it so let me teach you how to save it i will write print hello world again let me execute it okay it has been successfully executed now i'm going to click on file and i am going to save the notebook now if i close it i go back here if i shut down the kernel and i reopen it the line of code is going to appear now because i saved the notebook before all right so we have installed a jupyter notebook and we have created our first notebook saved it and wrote our first line of code now it's time to install partners so i'll get a code block before this line of code that i have written for that i'm going to click on this icon over here there you go i have got the code block now i'm going to simply type the command exclamatory mark pip install pandas and i am going to run this block of code okay you can see it has started downloading pandas and installing it and there you go it says that it has successfully installed numpy pandas pytz and tz data so we have got pandas installed through jupyter notebook what are we going to do now we'll create our first data frame but what is a data frame 
we will study it in detail in the next video but for now remember that there are two data structures in pandas for manipulating data number one data frames number two series now let's create our first data frame and i want you to create your first data frame with me and in case you have already done so in the past then it's time for you to revise so let me create a new notebook for myself i am going to create a new notebook all right i'm going to select the kernel and let me rename it first data frame okay notebook has been created now we can create data frames from various data sources which we will look into detail in the future videos but we will create our first data frame using a list so let's create a list but before that let's import pandas import pandas as pd and let's execute it okay it's throwing some warning it says that pi arrow will become a required dependency of pandas in the next major release of pandas all right i don't have it installed in my machine so this is going to cause problems for me so for now we are okay with it but in future if you are unable to use pandas then you'll have to install pi arrow first let me execute this code again and check if the warning again appears i think it should not and it doesn't appear all right now we are going to create a list so let me name the list as lst followed by an equals to sign and square brackets now let me add the elements so let the first element be equities second element be derivatives third element be cash and let there be one more let it be bonds asset classes from finance domain and now it's time to write the code to create a data frame from this list okay so it will be df which is going to be the name of our data frame followed by an equals to sign then pd which happens to be the alias of pandas you can see it over here pd dot data frame make sure that you put d capital and f capital and within brackets you pass lst which is our list and finally we print the data frame this is the code to create a data frame from a list from a python list let me execute this and there you go we have created our first data frame it's getting so exciting now so don't stop here and watch the next video because in that we'll further explore data frames